Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Bumbles McRumble 6, The Gravest Challenge. We have a massive night of amazing events planned for you, the likes of which you've never seen before. A main event world championship match between the World Dragonweight Champion Pepsi Man and Lord Von Ghoulish. But that's not the only massive match we have planned for tonight, as we have one of our most dastardly wrestlers going up against one of our most beloved in the opening match. It's the Power Cat Jeff Winslow versus Little Billy. And starting things off, some of you may recognize that music. Some of you may have gotten a bit hopeful when you heard that music, but unfortunately, that is not the case. That is the Power Cat Jeff Winslow coming down to the ring with the theme song of the cool dad, Don Crenshaw, his foe who he vanquished a mere two events ago. It seems that Power Cat is still riding the high of expunging his enemy from the Bumbles McRumbles and is still wearing that incredibly disrespectful T-shirt. This is the example that he wants to set for his children, the next generation. He wants to come out and show such extravagance, such bullheadedness. Honestly, you really want to see somebody like this get their head screwed on right, but unfortunately, it doesn't look like he's going to be able to do that on his own. But maybe the wrestler that he's chosen to fight tonight can knock a little bit of sense into him, if that's even possible, if he could get anything into that overinflated ego, that massive head of the power cat, Jeff Winslow. If anybody can do it, though, I have faith in Little Billy to do it. Little Billy, one of our youngest, but also most accomplished competitors. In his previous match at the Loser Leafs Town event, he wrestled Little Lord Birthday in a hellacious ladder match. One of the most beloved and dangerous matches in Bumbles McRumble's history. Saw Little Billy come out on top, and he's looking to carry that momentum forward, going into his match against the Power Cat, Jeff Winslow. It's going to be an uphill battle, but I have faith in Little Billy. But I'm not going to count out the Power Cat just yet. The match is about to get underway. We see our two competitors sizing each other up before the bell. And it looks like things are going to get started for the Bumbles McRumble 6 right away. A Power Cat, Jeff Winslow, bowling over Little Billy, but Little Billy fighting back with a Hurricane Rana! They're throwing bombs at the start of the match. They are not waiting for a warm-up period. They are going straight for the big ones. A big float over. Reverse DDT from Little Billy into a side Russian leg sweep. Takes down the Power Cat. It looks like the Power Cat is on the back foot in the start of the match. Is this going to continue? Maybe not. He seems to be mounting quite a bit of an offense. And what is, the, what is he doing? The Power Cat is on the outside near our two fat old men and is just running around. What is he doing? He's gotten back into the ring looking to square off with... No, he seems to be much more comfortable on the outside running away from Little Billy, who's eight years old, and is taunt... What is the Power Cat's modus operandi here? I don't understand this at all. He just runs away from Little Billy as soon as he gets near him. Running back into the ring now. As little Billy goes to enter. No. Oh, my goodness. That was his plan. He was luring. He was trying to sucker little Billy into a less advantageous position. He knows he can't beat little Billy in the ring on his own. He knows that he's not good enough. So he's trying to sucker him in. And there you can see that he's playing the mind games and they're paying off. That big flipping heel kick could have been a big deciding factor in the match. But unfortunately, little Billy missed it. No doubt razzled after the mind games that the power cat has been trying to play with him. Speaking of mind games, though, he's trying to scramble Little Billy's mind by slamming it against the mat over and over again. I tell you what, you can't respect the power cat when he does moves like that, uh, attacking the fragile back of the head. You hate to see a wrestler resort to those sorts of moves. A Frankensteiner like that might be what puts him in his place. But you got to look at the tail of the tape here. Little Billy, as, as accomplished as he may be in his own right, Big backdrop like that from somebody with a large reach advantage, height advantage, muscle capacity. It's going to be hard for Little Billy, there's no doubt about it. Especially if those attacks continue from the power cat, Jeff Winslow. He's going for a pinfall. That's way too soon for a pinfall. What is the disrespect that the power cat is showing off by thinking that's enough to go for a pin? you got to be kidding me, honestly. And that big flipping heel kick from Little Billy did not miss the mark this time. It looks like he may have reconstituted himself with that side rush and leg sweep. Little Billy, he, he is no stranger to high stress situations. He has been in two ladder matches. 
back to back, and he was able to keep his cool both times. He may not have won the first one losing to Zubaz, but he managed to take out Little Lord Birthday. And I don't know, but I don't know if that's gonna be enough. Going for the pinfall again. What is the Power Cat thinking? Is he so braggadocious, so egotistical to think that what he's hit Little Billy with is enough to put him away? But a fall away slam like that shows that even though he is a cowardly creature, the Power Cat is still some, the power in his name doesn't come from nothing. But at the same time, he has to look out for a standing moonsault from Little Billy. The power is there. And the brains are obviously there, otherwise he wouldn't have been able to hatch a plan to get his partner eliminated from the Bumbles McRumbles. But you gotta look out for moves like that. It doesn't matter how much of a plan you have going in. If somebody does a double donkey stomp to the back of your back, I don't know exactly what you're gonna be able to do to plan for that. But the power cat Jeff Winslow able to adjust going back to work on little Billy. He seems to be favoring the head. Softening him up for big fallaway slams like that. It seems to be his bread and butter. It's where he's most comfortable. And the power cat seems to keep going back to that well. Now, ugh, I, that clothesline was enough. I, I could feel that from where I was sitting. I could feel my neck wrench back like that. It's no good. What's the power cat attempting now? Whatever it was, it was a failure as little Billy's able to elbow him in the eye. And now goes for a tilt-a-world DDT. Little Billy is not out of this match. Don't for a second think that just because he has a size disadvantage, Little Billy is any less capable of winning this competition. Jawjacker slams the chin of the Power Cat down onto Little Billy's skull. And now he's going for an arm ringer into another Frankensteiner. And a flipping heel kick. Little Billy's feeling it. He's getting the momentum back on his side. And if he's going to want to beat the Power Cat, Jeff Winslow, he's gonna want to keep that momentum on his side at all times. He's got little Billy stuck into a corner, and what's he doing? Setting him up for a tree of whoa! What is the power cat? Ugh. Choking out little Billy as he's prone in the corner, and an elbow drop to the back, and a second elbow drop to the back. I tell you what, it, how anybody can respect the power cat. I know that there is a a vocal, a very vocal minority in the crowd that sees the Power Cat as some sort of hero. And I tell you, beautiful flipping uh, moonsault. I just can't see it. I can't see how anybody can support a guy that would do stuff like this and just feels little Billy into those taut ring ropes. Wrestling ring ropes are some of the tightest things in the world. For our competitors to bounce off them, they need to be so taut and to just haphazardly throw somebody at those ropes. It's tantamount to an illegal foreign object, but is unfortunately perfectly legal and is something that I think the power cat Jeff Winslow is going to take full advantage of. Little Billy, though, going for a pin as he goes one, two. That was a two count. That was a, that was a two count relatively early into the match, although both competitors... Oh my god. Did you see the power on display from Little Billy to do a belly to belly overhead suplex to the Power Cat Jeff Winslow? Drop kick to the back shows that Little Billy is just as much of a competitor in this match as the Power Cat Jeff Winslow. There's no telling how this match is going to play out now. Both men seem to be in their physical primes. Ah, uh, but Power Cat could still take this match back at any moment. And now setting up Little Billy in the corner for a big, oh, big shoulder barge. Signaling for the end, and you can see that Little Billy is on a wobbly base. I think his legs have taken a lot of damage throughout this match, but Little Billy reverses it, clubs him in the back. This could be the opening to end this match that he's been looking for. Oh! The Power Cat just kicked out the injured leg of Little Billy and is setting him up for a Power Cat Slam. If he lands it, it's over. Oh no, little Billy lands splat on the mat. One, two, three. It was a hard fought victory. If either men had won, it would have been a hard fought victory. But the Power Cat had to fight especially hard with all the dubious tricks he pulled early in the match, tiring out little Billy by making him chase him around the outside. It's a shame, but that's sometimes how the cookie crumbles. Power Cat Jeff Winslow has picked up a big victory over Little Billy. Now he seems to be jawjacking with a ref. Didn't count that first fall. One of those 
one count falls that he wanted to win the match on. That's the power cat for you. Moving on to our next match, though, we can't dwell too much on the past. We are seeing a massive matchup here. The winner of the New Blood Rumble going up against a rival of sorts. It's Tarzan Mask versus Balin. Coming down to the ring is one of our biggest newcomers from the Bumbles McRumbles 5 New Blood Rumble. The winner of that rumble is Tarzan Mask. Tarzan Mask, a beloved character, a tiger-themed professional wrestler, coming down to the ring with plenty of moxie pep in his step. I gotta imagine he is riding that high of winning the Bumbles McRumbles New Blood Rumble. And is coming down jazz with all the energy in the world. Tarzan Mask, though it must be said, his allegiances are for doubt because he was seen consorting with the DK crew who wanted him in their group for some reason. They're only accepting primates. I don't know if they're going to expand that roster to a tiger, but <laughs> it's something to look out for. If DK gets his claws into ta uh, Tarzan Mask, that could be bad for all of us. But not as bad as a year that this man has been having, Balin. Friend of the channel, Balin, now cart rolling down to the ring. Cart wheeling, rather. Uh, he has had a, uh, whatever the opposite of a banner, 2022 into 2023. A fantastic video released on the Bumbles McCumbles YouTube channel detailing his father, Yuji Naka, who is now incarcerated. But Balin doesn't seem to be letting that play onto his mind too much. He's just, he, he's out here to give the fans a show. And that's what we're going to get. Tarzan Mask going up against Balin of Wonderworld fame. The bell's about to ring. Here goes the match. Balin going in for a big diving tackle, but misses Tarzan Mask completely. Tarzan Mask now hammering with those giant shots into the corner. Shoulder barging into the gut of Balin. Of course, sending him down to the mat. And a big, oh! A big KO punch to Balin's head. Balin is losing a lot of steam early in this match now that I'm seeing it. Tarzan Mask is taking a lot. He is giving Balin a lot of punishment early into this match. If Balin cannot recover quickly, I don't see this one lasting very long. Whips Balin into the corner. Balin seems to be mounting an offense, though. He's trying to win this one for his father. Gets him into an arm ringer, but Tarzan Mask is able to reverse it into a knee to the gut and several punches and a big drop kick. You don't expect a man that big to be able to do a drop kick like that. And now going for a backbreaker. What is Tarzan Mask's next, next move going to be? Several blows to the head, knocks down Balin flat on his tuchus. And now what is Tarzan Mask going for? King Kong bomb! Whoa, that's one of his finishing maneuvers, the King Kong bomb. What is he, is he actually going to end this match with a kick to the gut? DDT, what? Tarzan Mask is making quick work of Balin. Taunting, trying to get Balin back up, but it seems Balin can't get back up under his own power. And he slams him down with a gigantic power bomb. Is this going to be the end of the match? Two, three? Tarzan Mask. That may be the shortest match in Bumbles McRumble's history. Tarzan Mask took out Balin with little to no trouble. You see that King Kong bomb. And then a DDT. And then his finishing maneuver, I believe, that is a power bomb that he calls the Tiger Trap, was able to take out Balin in very short form. Congratulations to Tarzan Mask for that impressive victory. Speaking of impressive, though, we've got a brand new Backstage exclusive with some fan favorite characters. Get ready to hear from Cool Hat Paul and the Foot Brawler. Alrighty, everything's in order. Ready to get started? I still don't get why this is how you want to do this. Why do we even need a third man? Well, those big apes have at least four members, and who knows how many more. We gotta be ready to fight fire with fire. How did I let you rope me into this? Okay, let's say we need a third man, which we don't. How is this going to get anyone in the door? Uh, little Billy only let me borrow a few crayons. Let's just get this over with. At least there's only four of them. All right, number one, could you please come in? So, you got a name, String Bean? What? Uh, I said, can we get what? a- What? I said- What? Paul, let me strangle this one. I heard you, you dumb son of a bitch. 
I'm wondering how you haven't heard of the toughest man on this entire planet. It's Zinthos. I gotta spell it out for you, yeah? And so, why do you want to join the team? Beer and gas money. We're not paying them too, are we? Next question, uh, what do you think you add to the team? You listening to yourself, boy? You got the chance to team with someone your mommy and daddy warned you about. I ain't a good guy. I do what I want, say what I want, and because of that, I get what I want. When I'm in the ring, bang, people on the other side aren't waiting to lock up. They're waiting to get their asses kicked. I ain't gonna stop till the stupid son of a bitch is coughing up teeth and crying for mommy. Then I'll stop a mud hole in his ass and walk it dry. Can you two give me a hell yeah? I like, I like. We could use a guy like this. A real brawler. Uh, but he's not red. Excuse you? Uh, look at you, wearing red. Look at me, all red. He's green and tall. We're red and short. Paul, 5'6 is the average height of men in Slamtown. I read it in the paper. Uh, Mr. Zinthos, are you willing to wear red if it means supporting the team? As long as you're paying, I don't care if I'm wearing red. What? Blue? What? Yellow? What? I'll come out in damn polka dots just to make sure the pay is worth it. I'll tell you what. I get a little of these jackasses' blood on my jacket. Is that red enough for you? Well, yeah, but don't expect us to pick up the dry cleaning bill. Anyway, last question. Uh, where would you like to go for celebration dinner after we win? Hold on there, partner. Just because we work together in the ring don't mean I'm joining your boy band. We could share a Steve Weiser once the show's over. But after that, I rev up my Harley and bang, I'm out of there. Alrighty, thank you, Mr. Zinthos. We'll call back if we decide to pick you. You better, or you two cream puffs ain't lasting a second out there. He seemed nice. Guy's got the personality of a power tool, but at least he's as dangerous as one. All right then, who's next? <laughs> hey there, boys. F my life. Oh, yeah, 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 I saw your poster for, for your big thingy in the dumpster, and I thought, hey, what's a party without the grease trap? <laughs> Why were you in the dumpster? Someone threw out my poster? Oh, yeah, 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 you boys couldn't ask for a better partner. I've been wrestling since Lincoln was in office. I've wrestled on all seven continents, and I worked over 400 days in a year. Yeah, see, see the time zones and stuff flying back and forth from Japan, or Nippon, as I like to call it, uh, means I actually did... Stop, stop, stop. None of those are even possible. If you're gonna lie, you could at least make it convincing. Paul, why is this guy even here? Did you see any penguins in Antarctica, Mr. Grease Trap? <laughs> Did I see any? Seen them? Son, I wrestled them. Yeah, I got this big nasty one in the old Arnie special double chicken wing. And then a big old grizzly bear came out. And guess what? I locked him in a bear hug. <laughs> Polar bear. You could have said polar bear. So cool! So, Mr. Trap, why do you want to join the team? Well, let old Arnie be straight with you. Now, you two remind me of myself when I was younger. Yeah, they used to call me the human beef jerky because I was lean and I was tough. <laughs> and I still am, but I want to show you all the way we did it back in Lexington, Kentucky. Now, you two could be like my trainees. Really? Really? <laughs> really? And all I'm asking for in return, and this is just a formality, really, never work for free boys, all I'm asking for is 700 bucks. Now, 700 bones is all old Arnie needs to get back on his feet. Yeah. Now, that may not seem like much to you, but <laughs> for old Arnie, those 700 smackers could, could change a, a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? <sighs> Of course we do! Now, you're already wearing red, which is great. Where do you want to go for celebration dinner? <laughs> Hell, hot diggity! We're getting a warm meal, too! All right, thank you, Mr... Mr. Grease Man. Don't call us, we'll... Just don't call us. <laughs> Hell, all righty, boys! Just remember, 700 smackers is all that's between you and a big, fat W. Okay, we get another applicant like that. And I swear, I'm breaking up this whole tag team thing we got going on. Brawler, I'm still gonna be your tag team partner. None of these guys are gonna steal me away. Just bring the next guy in already. Hiya, boys. The name's Murder, and I hear you need a tag team partner. Oh my god, Paul, why? Is this the best we can do? When's the bearded lady coming in? 
or the lion tamer. Don't tell me your clown car is double parked outside, isn't it? Oh, come on now. She hasn't even said anything. Okay, Miss... Murder? Um, what's your reason for wanting to join the team? Oh, oh, I know this one. I want to beat people up. And in a six-man tag, that's like three people for me to wail on. That's two more than you get in most matches, you know. Basic addition. I'm floored. All right. What do you think you can add to the team? Well, you've already got a super duper team here. I've never seen anyone get the stuffing beaten out of them like Polly and still get up. And Brawly over here may look all rough and tough on the outside, but deep down, he's a big softy. Pump the brakes, Clown Town. What's that supposed to mean? Aw, uh, come on, Battle Bot. Polly's getting conked in the head with a steel chair by those three big brutes. And who comes in to make the save? Why, his bestie! Come on, it was on national TV. You can't deny it. Sh shut up. That doesn't... I... He was my ride home, all right? Just answer the question. Oh, right. Well, I have what you two are missing. Violence. Me and Polly can go in, rough up those big brutes, then Brawly knocks them down! There's no way we can lose! Well, I like the nicknames, and pink is kind of a shade of red. All that's left is celebration dinner. Dairy Queen! Dairy Queen! Dairy, Dairy Queen. Queen! Dairy, Dairy Queen. Queen! Right. All right, I get it. Thank you for showing up, Miss Murder. We'll let you know when we make a choice. Bye-bye, Polly. Bye-bye, Brawly. Just remember, they don't call me murder for nothing. God, she's irritating. Ah, oh, come on, Brawly. You work with me all the time and never complain. Call me that again, and I'll use your intestines as a jump rope. Uh, noted. All right, number four, please come in. <sighs> I'm muted, sir. I still prefer this to the clown. So, Mr. Um, do you prefer mutant or sore? I prefer eating idiots who ask stupid questions. I'll just put you down as sore. Uh, so, what's your reason for joining the team? Those bums you're wrestling have a big, big bounty. One million bucks. Once we're through with them, I'm gonna bag them and melt their heads on my wall. See, this is what I'm looking for. That's intensity. That's Killer Instinct. What do you think you'll bring to the team? What do I bring to the team? I'm a dinosaur! I'm bringing a Stone Age Smackdown on all those primitive screwheads! Yes. See, Paul, this is what a real wrestler sounds like. Well, uh, he is a very nice shade of red, but I don't really think I want to know where he wants to go for dinner. Listen, big guy, just leave us your number and we'll get back to you, all right? You better! Or else I'll hunt you two down and rip you in half! Alright, Not. Super jazzed about the ending, but he's still got a good shot. I don't know. That was a lot of good talent. I don't think we can pick one so easily. Can you? I mean, yeah, I... I'll try my best. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your chance to be part of Bumbles McFumbles history. Vote in the poll in the description, comment section, and live chat to determine who will be Cool Hat Paul and the Foot Brawler's tag team partner. Speaking of tag teams, though, we're on to a big tag team matchup next as the brand deal takes on Punch Out. Coming down to the ring, yes, you're seeing that right. That is Wendy of Wendy's fame riding down alongside the Noid from Domino's. It seems that those two companies have looked for a bit of a corporate synergy, teaming up their mascots, Wendy's and the Noid, have come together to form a tag team known as the Brand Deal. It's going to be very interesting to see how these two get along. I see uh, the wiliness and the unpredictability of a Noid mixing with the age and experience of a Wendy very, very well. Who knows, these two might try to get Pepsi Man in on their uh, little alliance, but the cameraman can focus on it for a second. I want to talk about that bicycle. That's a nice bicycle. That is a top-class bicycle. I bet the Noid uses that when he's trying to hunt down those uh, pesky pizzas he wants to ruin. Uh, what, a, what a scam that guy is. But 
their tag team proficiency is going to be put to the test here against two characters who are maybe just a tad bit more familiar. Coming down to the ring, two of the banes of my existence, that's Aaron Ryan and Super Macho Man forming the tag team Punch-Out. These two, very proficient in terms of their uh, cheating, prolific in the same regard. These two have come together to form a tag team. You may have noticed there are quite a few tag teams forming in the Bumbles McRumbles. We have the DK Crew, we have Foot Brawler and Friend, we have Punch-Out, we have the Brand Deal. Perhaps this could be a, uh, an omen of things to come. Perhaps a tag team division is not tag team championships even? We're just gonna have to wait and see. Of course, that's not discounting uh, Thunder Pants and Akimbo for Mare, although I don't doubt that a lot of people do discount them. But enough talk about them. It's time for this match to get underway. It seems that Aaron Ryan and the Noid will be starting things out as they go to lock up in the center of the ring. And a quick jab to the Noid's face puts the advantage firmly in the position of punch out as Aaron Ryan immediately goes for a tag out as they're preparing for some sort of double team maneuver. Drop toe hold into an elbow drop from Super Macho Man. Now, when, when we're talking about the age and experience and the wiliness that the brand deal has, on the other side of the ring, we have Super Macho Man and Aaron Ryan, a pair of wily competitors if ever there was one. These two seem to have a winning combination. They've isolated the Noid as a weak link in the team and are going to continue to tag out, stay fresh, and make sure that no one man gets too exhausted. These two are going to make sure that the Noid is in a bad position no matter what. On their side of the ring, outside of a neutral corner, you can't discount the Noid. He's had quite a bit of longevity. Oh, but I don't think that now is the right time for taunting at all. I think that that was a big mistake on the Noid's part, and I think he's paying for it right away. Elbow to the face from Aaron Ryan. Goes for a punch, and... Knocks the Noid clean on his rear. Is he going for a tag out to Super Macho Man? I wouldn't have left the Noid on that side of the ring. That's way too close to his neutral corner. But the Noid did not go for a tag out. He seems to think that he has this situation well and truly under control as now he is being put in a camel clutch. That is a dangerous move. That could wrench the neck, hurt the back. That could very much spell the end for the Noid in terms of his survivability. But I spoke too soon. They're going for a double team maneuver. Double STO, Space Tornado Ogawa, sending the Super Macho Man down to the mat. As now the Noid seems to be getting to work, throwing him into a corner and a big running clothesline. What's he doing now? Bouncing off the rope, going for a big leg drop. The Noid, he is no slouch in the ring. The Noid knows what he's doing as he goes and gives him a big body slam. Throws Super Macho Man down onto the shoulders, onto the small of the back, but he was taunting a bit too much, and now he's been poked in the eyes. He needs to be able, he no, needs to know that he and Wendy are not the more experienced team in this regard. They need to know that these two, Super Macho Man and Aaron Ryan, are more familiar with each other than the then the Domino's mascot is with the Wendy's mascot. No, no, he seemed to have been able to go for something but a big punch to the gut. Puts pay to any idea that the Noid may have had as now he is being waylaid with shots and thrown back into that dangerous corner as they go for another tag team maneuver. They seem to favor this drop toe hold into elbow drop combination. Must be trying to soften up the back of the Noid. Keely, Wendy has not yet tagged in as the Noid returns to where he is most comfortable and that is back down on the mat. But he still manages to kick out. There's still a work to be done. Especially if the Noid's gonna go for elbows and leg drops like that. It's going to take a lot more than that to keep the man down. If for no other reason. He's got a, uh, you say very low center of gravity. It's going to be very hard to pin him to the mat when he's constantly jutting up. And he's going for the tag, it seems. He's finally been able to tag in Wendy. The two now whipping Aaron Ryan into the ropes. And a giant deal over. Wendy, it's Wendy's time to get to work now. She needs to put down Aaron Ryan before they could possibly mount a comeback. But that comeback may have been squashed too soon as he's going for dozens upon dozens of hellacious body blows to Wendy. Going for the pinfall. Can Wendy kick out? Goes for one. Just a one count. 
Just a one count, Wendy is far too fresh for that, but Aaron Ryan, as Weasley and Wiley as ever, is not going to be put down so easily. Those drop kicks either countered or the damage was minimalized, as now Wendy is looking to ah, crush the neck of Aaron Ryan against those bottom ring ropes. I have made much note about how taut those ring ropes are. If you want to feel just how painful that could be, just imagine your neck ramming, being flung full force into a, a wooden bar. Now it seems that Wendy has control of the match, going for a couple punches, a couple kicks. Kick blocked, but Inzaguri puts Aaron Ryan on the ground. He needs to tag in Super Macho Man soon, or else I could see this ending very, very badly for their maiden voyage as a tag team. Both of these teams can't afford a loss in their first match. Aaron Ryan goes down, takes Wendy out with a, uh, a grounded uppercut. He's going for the pinfall. No! But you've got to look. They took out the Noid. The Noid is out on the outside. It's two against one for all intents and purposes. That super kick did a lot of work to keep Aaron Ryan from getting to the corner to make the tag. But who knows how much it's going to do now that she slams him down with a back neck breaker going for a pinfall. Can the Noid keep Super Macho Man sequestered long enough for a pinfall? They can. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the first win for the tag team of the brand deal. The Noid taking a lot of punishment. The Noid absorbing a lot. And it seems that that might have been the plan all along. Tire them out with the Noid as a sort of human shield until Wendy can come in and do a lot of work, a lot of good maneuvers, neck breakers, super kicks, and that big, I think she calls that the loose fry. Yeah, the loose fry. Brings down Aaron Ryan and comes, brings this match to an end. Congratulations to Wendy and congratulations to the Noid on their first tag team win. But from a first-time tag team to a first-time match type, we're going on to our first ever triple threat match between Yellow Jacket, Spamton, Vayro with championship implications. Coming down to the ring straight out of the dark world, it's number one salesman, it seems to be, yes it is, Spamton G. Spamton from Delta Room. Coming down to the ring, he is hyped up, he is jacked up. Didn't do too hot in the New Blood Rumble where he debuted, but there, and nobody can do that good in a Rumble unless they win it, you know? It seems like he's going to change his tone, going to change his fate coming down to the ring right now, but uh, I see him reaching into his pocket there. Yep, ever the salesman, he is not going to stop his appearance in the Rumble. Let him stop him from taking a deal. Bampton always looking for a good deal to get himself back in the green. He's been in the red for a while. I don't think it's unfair to say that. But now, he may find himself in a very much better position if he wins this match. This match is a massive prize purse given the fact that it is a uh, no disqualification triple threat match elimination. So the first pinfall does not decide the match. It is the final pinfall. Whoever gets pinned first is simply eliminated. Could it be Spamton or could it be one of his enemies coming down to the ring in short order? Next up is Pharaoh, character who I'd say performed admirably in the New Blood Rumble. Uh, these two characters previously both debuted in the New Blood Rumble. The only one who is not from that Rumble is Yellow Jacket, who has been around since the Second City Slam uh, Bumbles McRumbles 2. There's no such thing as the Bumbles McRumbles. That's ridiculous. Pharaoh coming down to the ring, one of the several monsters that debuted in that New Blood Rumble alongside characters like uh, Ragnax Rip and Tear, uh, Spectoro, who has the uh, record for the shortest elimination in the Rumble history, and Slender Man. I'd say that Pharaoh probably fared the best out of her monster cohorts, and now is looking to win this match and shoot way up in the championship rankings. Pharaoh is a wily competitor. She has been around for quite a time. She knows all the tricks in the book. In fact, I think it's fair to say she may have written the book. But she's going to have to contend with new blood, not just from her opponent from the New Blood Rumble, but from somebody of a newer generation. That's right. Coming down to the ring is the Yellow Jacket. A stalwart of the Bumbles McRumbles by this point, making his debut in the Bumbles McRumbles 2 Second City Slam. Yellow Jacket. In a similar class to characters like the War Pig, who could not be here tonight due to uh, injuries sustained during his uh, previous match with Lord Von Foolish at the New Blood Rumble. Yellow Jacket. 
Well, they'll be, well, I wouldn't say a first ballot pick has certainly been a steady, reliable hand in previous Rumbles, uh, competing in the ladder match at the Muscle Dream Impact League, fighting on the side of the Cool Dad Don Crenshaw in the Game of Death match. Yellow Jacket, a bit of a sleeper hit in all honesty. Can he win this match though? We're going to have to see. This is going to be a very intense, difficult match. You're fighting two people at once for all intents and purposes. And the key is going to be making alliances early, singling out a weak competitor and taking them out so you can have the ring all to yourself. All three competitors sizing each other up as the match begins. And it seems Spamton makes a beeline for the Yellow Jacket with a big swing neck breaker. As Pharaoh starts choking him out, I think they may have picked their weak man. Yellow Jacket on the receiving end of more punishment whipped into the ropes by Pharaoh. And a drop toe hold puts him right on the ground. Spamton sort of just observing things coolly from the sidelines, but goes for a big tag team maneuver. Double STO, Space Tornado Ogawa sends him down to the mat as Yellow Jacket is taking a lot of punishment early on. You know, he is definitely... I was talking about they need to isolate somebody. I think they've picked Yellow Jacket for that. Pharaoh picking Yellow Jacket up, but Spamton seems to be eager to get his shots in as he takes Pharaoh to the outside, goes for a big forearm, but Pharaoh just beals him, beals him over her head and then stomps on his face. Incredible moves by Pharaoh, incredible resiliency by the Yellow Jacket, and Spamton G. Spamton still not out of the starting gate. But it seems that now he's more than capable of working with Yellow Jacket spoken too soon. Too soon, the Yellow Jacket and Spamton get their heads conked together. As now, Pharaoh is running a bit wild, throwing Spamton out of the ring and still barreling down on Yellow Jacket. I don't know where this aggression is coming from, but certainly you cannot say that she doesn't want to win. She wants this win more than anything and is willing to do anything to get it. Big clothesline into the corner. Yellow Jacket, though, not going down easy, but with all these tag team maneuvers, like a double choke slam like that, I don't like Yellow Jacket's chances, not at all. He has been uh, waylaid, uh, massacred from the outset. He has been the easy target for the match, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see him eliminated soon, but Pharaoh dumping. Spampton G. Spampton out of the ring, trying to get the pin on Yellow Jacket all for herself. That's certainly interesting. Now Yellow Jacket going for a powerbomb into the corner. Launches Pharaoh, slams her down into the turnbuckles. That was a hellacious move. That could be a match ender right there, if not for Spampton G. Spampton. Trying to put stop to it as they go for a big double gut buster. Neither, neither Pharaoh nor Spampton really wants to see the other get the elimination on Yellow Jacket. That is interesting, that's very interesting. That speaks to a bit of an ego issue between the two. No, they wanna be the one that wins, you know, two falls, not just one fall and let somebody else take all the glory. Oh. Unfortunately, that is the foibles of a no disqualification match. You can flagrantly kick your opponent in the penis. As now, she has the Yellow Jacket in a figure four leg lock but releases it quickly. I don't think she had the full grip on it. Those pants might have been, you know, a, a saving grace, a bit of a way to escape that figure four leg lock as Spamton G. Spamton with the reverse DDT takes down. Pharaoh has now sliced bread number two, takes down Spamton G. Spamton. He was trying to taunt, he was trying to antagonize, and it seems like it didn't work. It just riled up the yellow jacket that was a kick out at 2.99 from Spampton. G Spampton. It's going to be impre it's going to be interesting to see how this match plays out now that Spampton has taken such a big move. On top of the fact that the Yellow Jacket has taken a variety of big moves throughout the entire match. Pharaoh seems content to watch from the sidelines as Spampton sets Yellow Dragon up for a power bomb. Wait a minute! No, he's lifting him back up. Second power bomb. No way! The intensity from Spamton G. Spamton to set up a triple power bomb. Unbelievable! And now Pharaoh seems to be picking the scraps while the Yellow Jacket is incapacitated. Ugh! 
a flagrant, just blatant shut, a shot to the groin. On Spamton G. Spamton, you'd hope that he wouldn't be affected by something like that. That is a lifting reverse DDT. And now, Pharaoh desperately trying to pick at the scrap. She has been trying to do this all match, just letting the two of them fight it out and picking her battles where it's most appropriate. That's probably the smart thing to do in a triple threat match. But now, whipping Yellow Jacket into the corner and goes for the pinfall on Spamton G. Spamton. Two, three. Pharaoh has scored an elimination on Spamton G. Spamton. He is now eliminated, as now it's down to her and the man she has been targeting this entire match, the Yellow Jacket. But don't count the Yellow Jacket out yet. Those were an impressive series of blows. I think he may be getting a second win after being robbed of that pinfall. Of course, though, it's anybody's game. Pharaoh and Yellow Jacket have shown themselves to be nothing, if not equal competitors. It's going to be an exciting match to see who can come out on top as Yellow Jacket takes a second to posture. I don't blame him too much at this point. I'd take what I can get if I, you know, finally got my opponent down after so long. I'd take a breather. I'd take a moment. Goes for a crucifix pin. Tries to pin Pharaoh. One. Only a one count. Pharaoh. I think she got her feet into the ropes and was able to roll out of it. Whips her into the ropes. Goes for a jump over. Another jump over. What's he going for here? A running attack. No. Drop toe hold. Slams his face into the turnbuckle. Pharaoh and Yellow Jacket knocking lumps out of each other. Can't be imparted enough how much work Spampton G. Spampton put into this match to soften up both these competitors, but a leg sweep like that may be the move that turns this in, in, into his Yellow Jacket's favor. An elbow to the face like that goes for a pinfall. One, just a one count. Pharaoh has such intestinal fortitude to kick out of, a, of moves like this. She has been hit with a combination of flurry and goes for another one, slamming her face down into the turnbuckle. As what is he doing now? Going for a high risk, high rope maneuver, but misses a vital knee drop. That can injure the leg. That could have done a lot more harm than good to Yellow Jacket as another drop toe hold takes him down. Pharaoh has been getting her licks in all match. Raking the back. I don't know how much that's going to do with a jacket on a thick leather jacket. But she seems convinced that it's the right move to do. Pharaoh has impressed massively in this match, as has the yellow jacket. A big clothesline, though, takes him down. I feel like the next momentum swing could be the last. Whoever gets momentum on their side with a big maneuver could be the winner of this match. It's anybody's game at this point. Pharaoh whipping him into the ropes, onto the outside. What's she going to do now? Kicks him as the Yellow Jacket beals down to the back, or to the outside area. Pharaoh taking an opportunity to take a breather and manages to counter, elbowing into the eye of the Yellow Jacket. Is no, he whips her into the corner there, corner of the barricade, and is now landing shot after shot after shot onto her dome as he runs into the ring, hoping to catch some breath. I can imagine he's pretty exhausted after all of the fighting he's had to do. Now the two size each other up, but no, Yellow Jacket going for some blows, and it seems, yes, a guillotine onto the bottom rope. That's cutting off the airflow, that's cutting off survivability. That is a smart move from the Yellow Jacket. It may not be pretty, but dang if it don't work. And that giant flying arm into the corner, that's where the beauty comes in. He may not have been too beautiful with that last move, but that forearm into the corner, a work of art. Seems to be going for it again. Forearm into the corner, lands again. I, Yellow Jacket's got the momentum on his side. I'd say that the match is more so going in his favor with a side Russian leg sweep from Pharaoh. Big crossbody springboard attack, misses, and a drop kick to the head. That could have been a fatal mistake. He's going for the pinfall, one. Not enough yet, though. Not enough yet. Pharaoh is still very much in this match, even after a costly mistake like that springboard miss as she jaw jacks down onto the mandibles of the Yellow Jacket. Posturing a bit, trying to bring it to his feet, but a big single leg drop kick. Into a knee drop, didn't miss that time. Like I've said, these two are so evenly matched, there's just no telling who could take this match, who could win at any position. Backbreaker into neckbreaker, weakening that spinular area. What could he be going for? We know he has sliced bread number two in his arsenal, but he also has a big fisherman suplex. 
slamming Pharaoh down onto the shoulders, the back of the neck. This is a dangerous position to be in, and as he gets her up onto his shoulders for a big swinging neck breaker, a cutter even. Going for the pinfall, could this finally be the time? No! Pharaoh still has the fortitude to kick out at one. What does she, I, I know that she may not have all of her organs, might have been a couple left in Cairo in Egypt, but she has such strength, intestinal fortitude to still fight on after everything the Yellow Jacket has put her through but isn't able to land the mark there as he was prone on the ring canvas. What is he attempting now? Waylaying her with shots, a couple of good ones to the mush. Ah, uh, Snapmare into a soccer kick, a penalty kick. Yellow Jacket's gonna need to try something big and soon if he's gonna wanna win this one. Fisherman Suplex goes for a small package. One, two. That was the first two count on Pharaoh. That was so important. That was so important that he managed to land that one. It shows that she is weakening. Her resolve has started to weaken as he goes again for that neck shot. After such an unadvantageous position, being picked out as the weak man at the beginning of the match, Yellow Jacket has fought back admirably against Pharaoh, who seemed more at home on the outside, letting the other two fight and picking her scraps whenever she can. Slice spread number two. It's over. Yellow Jacket goes for the pinfall. One. Two! Three! What? What happened? What? What? What is this? Oh my god, who are- Spectoro and Slenderman? What are they doing in here? Oh my goodness, the- They're attacking the Yellow Jacket! And it seems to be on behalf of Pharaoh! Oh my goodness, no, this is what I was talking about when I said a no disqualification match is so dangerous! There is nothing illegal about what's going on right now! This is an attack on the Yellow Jacket. This match clearly means a lot to Pharaoh. Like I said, championship implications, but what the heck are Spectoro and Slenderman doing here? Yellow Jacket attempting to fight back, but the numbers game is simply too much. Spectoro whipping him into the ropes with a big takeover. Now it seems like going for the pinfall. One. What? What is in the Yellow Jacket right now that he was able to kick out of that? That was unbelievable. And what the heck are these people doing down at ringside? No, not even in, not even at ringside, in the ring! Spectoro, Slenderman, and Pharaoh just tag team, double teaming the poor Yellow Jacket. Yellow Jacket doesn't stand a chance. He's being assaulted out here. And now what is Slenderman doing, whipping him into the ropes? Is he going for it? Sling Blade takes down the Yellow Jacket, and I think it's fair to say one, two, disgusting. Pharaoh. With the assist from Slenderman and Spectoro in this no elimination match, sorry, no disqualification, picks up the victory, but at what cost? At the cost of the moral high ground, no doubt. We may have just seen another new team form here tonight between Spectoro, Slenderman, and their head honcho, Pharaoh. A disappointing end to an incredible match, but I'm not congratulating that. How dare Pharaoh do something like this? However, it's time for our main event for the evening. The biggest match potentially in Bumbles McRumbles history. The first ever title defense for the World Dragonweight Champion Pepsi Man versus Lord Von Ghoulish. And coming down to the ring right now with a confident stride is our World Champion Pepsi Man, who recently defeated Coke Kogan at the New Blood Rumble to win that World Dragonweight Championship, a prize from Wrestlepoca, the god of wrestling, who has gifted us with a World Championship that is now proudly held around Pepsi Man's waist. Pepsi Man, a fighting champion, ready to take on all comers, although it's going to be difficult to say that he's ready for this challenge because Lord Von Ghoulish is potentially the toughest competitor we've ever seen in the Bumbles McRumbles. We've never seen him defeated by traditional means, always eliminated uh, by being thrown over the top rope in a battle royale sort of situation. Now is the intestinal test, the, the gut check for Pepsi Man. Is he worthy of holding that championship or will it fall to his gravest challenger yet, Lord Von Ghoulish? down to the ring right now is said vampire lord 
Lord Von Gulich feared throughout the entire Bumbles McRumbles roster as potentially the most dangerous competitor of them all, a master of magic, an elder vampire, somebody with whose physical strength is already immeasurable on top of those other aspects. It's going to be an uphill battle for Pepsi Man, that much is for certain. If I had to say, I'd say the Pepsi Man needs to come out of the gates guns blazing if he wants to take down Lord Von Gulich. But nothing is certain in, when it comes to fighting the Dark One, you know. He has any amount of magical spells he can whip out, though we've never seen him use them. Some sort of warped, twisted sense of sportsmanship, I think, keeps him from doing that. Lord Von Gulich coming down to the ring. He takes all the time that he wants, because what does he have to rush for? He's a dark vampire lord. The rest of the Rumble will wait for him. That's how he sees it, I bet. The match doesn't start until he gets in the ring. Although you can't discount the fact that this is returning from, uh, I don't want to say an embarrassing loss, but he was eliminated in the Game of Death match by Waluigi after eliminating three other people, so maybe that's still playing on his mind? It's difficult to say. But one thing is for certain, when he gets into that ring and Pepsi Man and him lock up, it's going to be a clash of titans. Two men at the top of their game, ready to take it all take it to the limit to try to beat their opponent. Von Gulich still posturing as now we have our introductions. The challenger, Lord Von Gulich, over 500 years old, is ready to take on the People's Champion, a popular wrestler that is unmatched in the Bumbles McRumbles. Pepsi Man, our World Dragonweight Champion, putting up his belt against the Dark One. How this match is going to play out, there is no way of knowing. He hands off the belt to our official, who presents it to Lord Von Gulish. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the championship match to begin. We see Pepsi Man trying to show no emotion, trying to appear unfazed as Lord Von Gulish makes his intentions known as the bell rings, and Pepsi Man right out of the corner picks him up. German suplex! immediately takes down Lord Von Gulich like we've never seen him taken down before. Hitting him with several hammer-like blows, jumps up into the corner, what is he doing? Face Buster onto the ground! Pepsi Man has come to play. He is not going to let Lord Von Gulich intimidate him, but I don't know if it may have been so smart to come out of the gate like that as a big clothesline immediately evens things. Those punches, that suplex, that Face Buster, immediately undone by that one attack from Lord Von Gulich. Pepsi Man, though not a slouch, going straight, ducks down, ducks down again. What's he going for here? Arm drag, flipping Lord Von Gulish as he goes for the early pinfall. If I were Pepsi Man, I don't blame him. I'd want to end this as soon as I can. The, the, the time game favors Lord Von Gulish, especially with an attack like that, a sidewalk slam. Lord Von Gulish, as I said, is favored in the, in the time game. If this goes on, Soda goes flat eventually, but Blood will not. Vor Von Gulish has the ability to outlast Pepsi Man. That's why Pepsi Man can't afford to take many moves like that. Needs to come out of the gate with moves like that. A German suplex takes down Lord Von Gulish again as the spin kick finds the mark into the gut as he now hammers him with blow after blow. Flipping him around, what's he going for here? No, Lord Von Gulish able to counter with a club to the back of the neck. Pepsi Man, though, not going to make this easy for the Dark One. Ugh. But those attacks like that, we've seen some high-level kicks from Lord Von Gulish in the past, especially in the Game of Death match, where he took out not just, uh, I believe, the War Pig. He took out the new Ninja, which is no small feat, but also Skeletor. He is not somebody to be trifled with, although Pepsi Man seems to be holding his own at the moment. I spoke too soon, a knee to the gut puts him in a very bad situation. Fall away slam tosses Pepsi Man halfway across the ring, almost out of the ring, if he didn't catch himself on those ropes. Pepsi Man now trying to toss Lord Von Gulish, but whips him back into an uppercut, goes for another pinfall, one. Pepsi man, you gotta understand, those attacks are not going to keep somebody like Von Gulish down for long. You've gotta go for the bombs. You've gotta go for the heavy artillery. You've gotta go for the WMDs. 
And Von Gulish knows that. A big DDT, a running, jumping DDT. Slams. Almost crumples the head of Pepsi Man onto the ground. I'd say that Lord Von Gulish has the advantage so far. He's been able to land more of those big attacks. Those German suplexes from Pepsi Man have been effective, but it's nothing like a clothesline from the Dark One. Goes for another pinfall. Pepsi Man wisely trying to maybe frustrate Lord Von Gulish with these constant attempts at, pin at pinfalls. But it could do just that. It could frustrate Lord Von Gulish, and that makes him much more dangerous. The only thing more dangerous than Lord Von Gulish is a pissed off Lord Von Gulish. But it seems like Pepsi Man's able to gain his bearings and clotheslines, clotheslines! Lord Von Gulish to the outside of the ring, taking himself out with him! And now this fight has gone to the outside, where I think either men could make a case for being the stronger man. Death Valley Driver! Death Valley Driver onto the back of the neck, injuring Lord Von Gulish. You can see that he is haggard on the outside, as now what is he trying to do? Another German suplex! Tree posts! Lord Von Gulish onto the ground as Pepsi Man throws him back into the ring and slams the elbow down onto his head, possibly onto the nose, onto the... Oxifoot area. Pepsi Man has done a good job regaining control. Goes for a pin. German suplex into pin. Bridging pin is not enough. I don't think he had it exactly. Oh no. Slams him down with a full Nelson slam. Lord Von Gulish is going for an early win here. He's going for the pin. One, two. It was a two count. That was a two count onto Pepsi Man. Pepsi Man has taken a lot more damage than Lord, than Lord Von Gulish has so far. And now what is Lord Von Gulish going for now? That's not a typical taunt from him. That's not a typical move either. He's going for a soda popper! He takes Pepsi Man down with his own finishing maneuver. One, two, three. Pepsi Man nearly got taken out with his own maneuver there. And you've got to imagine that has rattled him to his core as he escapes the ring, trying to regain his composure. Now tossing Lord Von Gulish into, our, into the announce table. And a big backbreaker on the outside. There's no give to the ring. That is hard concrete that is making contact with that leg. And now dragging Lord Von Gulish. What is he doing? Setting up Lord Von Gulish's head against the ring post. What is Pepsi Man tr trying to do here? Pepsi Man with a joust, a le leg kick into the head of Lord Von Gulish, sandwiching it in between the ring post. Oh, that is an absolutely vile move, but it's what he needs to do. Lord Von Gulish is a dangerous competitor going into the ring to make sure this does not end by countout. Pepsi Man does not want an inconclusive finish. He wants a definitive stamp on this match as he goes for a Michinoku driver onto the outside. Lord Von Gulish is facing his gravest challenge now, trying to fight back against Pepsi Man as he is now hammered with blow after blow after blow after blow after blow against the barricade. Going back into the ring, he is trying to stop the referee's count as long as he comes into the ring and then immediately goes out. He resets the count and will not end by count out, although it may end by pinfall if he can get him back into the ring and pin him after that uh, big springboard maneuver. Speaking of high risk maneuvers, a big flipping kick off the top rope. Puts Von Gulish on his rear as he's setting him up. Is this a soda popper? No, Death Valley Driver. He knows that Lord Von Gulish is too fresh for that. Is he too fresh though for a two count? A two count! That series of moves nearly ended Lord Von Gulish's night. That nearly took him out entirely. Lord Von Gulish has feeling the effects of the match as is Pepsi Man. Pepsi Man though, what is he trying? Wheels back, and a big clothesline! That wasn't a clothesline, that's a lariat. A lariat is a clothesline you gotta apologize for afterwards. And that's exactly what Pepsi Man hit Lord Von Gulish with. Sets him up again for another Death Valley Driver! You gotta wonder, is that move trying to send a message, a Death Valley Driver? I'm just speculating, but it could be interesting. Spine Buster brings Spine to Pine down onto the mat as he goes for the pinfall again. One, two, three, no. No, Lord Von Gulish was prepared that time. He knows that it's coming. He knows that the pinfall is coming, and he's not going to let himself be caught out like that. Pepsi Man and him jockeying for position. Pepsi Man gets the advantage for another backbreaker. Attacking the small of the back, the lower back area, as he wills him up for a big sidewalk slam. Goes for the pinfall. One, two, th 
Oh no! Von Gulish is still too fresh. Von, Gil Von Gulish, after all of this, is still too fresh for a pinfall. Another high-level kick and punch to the arm. He's trying to disable the soda popper. He doesn't want Pepsi Man to be able to get him up for that. Gets him into a headlock, though, and whips Pepsi Man into the ropes. Yep, what's he going for now? No, Pepsi Man counters with a small package. One, two, three. No, no, it's still not enough. I thought that he was able to be able to retain his championship there, but Pepsi Man is still, with a coconut crush like that, still in the running. Even though Lord Von Gulish is hitting him with everything he's got, Pepsi Man's hitting him back just as hard. Big belly to belly slam. Oh, Lord Von Gulish may be signaling for the end here, though. As Pepsi Man tries to go for more attacks, but he misses that critical leg sweep. Could that be the leg sweep that decides the match? Pinfall attempt here off a German suplex, but it's not going to work. But an Inzaguri is really seeming like the momentum is in Pepsi Man's corner as he whips him into the rope. No, another uppercut. Goes for the pinfall. One, two, three. No. No, Von Gulish refuses to stay down. He has such intestinal fortitude. He knows that he cannot afford to lose this match. This is the biggest match of his career. But a backstabber from Pepsi Man may be enough to keep him down. Pepsi Man signaling for the end. He's showing that he is still in prime fighting condition. He can take down Lord Von Gulish as he gets him up for a soda popper. Is he going to get it? Down he goes. Von Gulish in a prone position. Is this the end of the match? One, two, three! Pepsi Man retains! Pepsi Man is still your World Dragon Weight Champion! Holding that championship to lock, holding it high above, neither competitor has anything to be upset about in this match. They both gave it everything they had. It just so happens that this night, on this occasion, Pepsi Man was the better man. We saw near falls. We saw dozens of times where the match could have ended for either man. But it just so happened that this time, this time, Pepsi Man retains his World Dragon Weight Championship. Thank you to everybody who has attended the Bumbles McRumble 6. The bravest challenge has been answered and won. This should be the part where the video awkwardly cuts to black, but unfortunately, I'm not perfect and needed other people's help to get this video done. The segment you saw earlier with Cool Hat Paul and the Foot Brawler was the work of dozens of artists working together to make something I'm super proud of and happy to have put together. Not just the artists, but the people who brought the characters to life with their voices. So we're gonna go character by character to thank the people who made it happen. Cool Hat Paul was made possible by Dagalus on Twitter, who provided tons of help and amazing artwork that fit Paul to a T, and as for his voice, it's me. Listen, I'm not gonna be in a position where I fall out with the voice of Paul, he's my son. Foot Brawler was brought to life by the artist Camomilla XD and voiced by Talon Sen. He was the second most important to get right, seeing as he ended up carrying most of the dialogue, and the combination of art and performance was exactly what I wanted. Zenthos was the product of the art of Star Cannon and the voice of Dexter Howard. Dexter's Stone Cold performance was spot on, and Star Cannon can't be thanked enough, doing the initial concept art for a lot of the characters before I decided to go in a different direction of every character having their own style. So they're probably the most important person to get this whole production going, aside from Zubat of course. Arnie Scarborough was the result of Ray O'Hare's voice work and art from me. Yep, yeah, either you thought, wow, that's some good art for Arnie, or wow, he must have gotten this art on sale. Ray completely shifted the characterization of Arnie, though. Instead of a bitter and hardened vet, Ray shifted him to this desperate and cheesy bum that he is now. I hope you all took your normal pills before Mad Murder came on screen and were able to appreciate the artwork done by Haji Mew and the voice work of Kelsey Painter. They were both such big parts of making this character work, and I cannot thank them enough. Mutant Sword came to you thanks to Woobsley and Andrew Mooney, which came together just perfectly for the big dinosaur buddy we all know and love. I don't know why I wrote him so cocky, though. He's literally never won a match on screen. Now that should be it again, but I was on a bit of a hot streak and future-proofed as well, and got some artwork done for characters that didn't feature in this video, but I know are going to show up at some point, so it's better to have them ready than instead of being caught off guard. These characters also don't have voices yet, so we're just going to be crediting the artists. Lizard Emoji, who does such beautiful and detailed art, had the privilege of drawing out Lord Von Gulish. 
a funny thing to note, I ordered my commission in black and white, but I suppose the gravitational pull of Von Gulish compelled them to also color the Speedo anyway. Chaco Chilla, who does incredible pixel art in a very Undertale style, came in clutch for the pixel art of Zubaz. It's so detailed and meticulous, so much better than Zubaz deserves. Speaking of Zubaz, his tag team partner also got the old art treatment, and I couldn't think of a better style to show off how much of a complete loser the new ninja is than this. This artwork as well was also done by me. That's right, even in a project where I was almost completely beholden to other people, I still managed to find a way to give myself the most credit. We saw him in action earlier tonight, and I want to give a special shout out to Rebred for their artwork on Little Billy. Re is a lifelong friend of mine, and they deserve all the love and attention in the world, both for their artwork and the game they're developing, Azure Bloom, which you can follow at the link in the description. Follow Azure Bloom. Finally is Demoneko, and their super cute art style fit perfectly with Little Lord Birthday. I love the exaggeration in their style, and I'm extremely excited to use it in the future. In a more general sense, I want to thank everybody who made this possible, not just for their amazing talent that I'm so excited to display, but also they asked so few questions about what I do and why I needed this. I sent somebody a picture of Cool Hat Paul, and their response was, yeah, sure. That shouldn't be how this works. Sending PNGs of these wrestlers should be considered an assassination attempt. 